Okay, 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 okay. We seem to have outdone ourselves this time. We have slides visible on the screen. It is a blue screen, but it's not flickering, so I think that means it's, it's, it's a good thing. Fingers crossed. Um, while we wait for uh, people still to uh, shuffle in and, and take seats, um, I was just told uh, to come here and speak to the microphone with absolutely no uh, agenda, and I think Juho will regret this uh, instruction. Um, how was lunch? Everybody have good lunch? Yes. Was it as good as yesterday's lunch? Yeah, Ooh, nice. Yes, uh, there was a meaty boys over there enjoying uh, their their lunch today. Um, what else is there to say? Uh, edge computing. We already had a session, um, you know, just before lunch. That was a great introductory session, and now we're going to dive a little bit deeper into edge computing. Um, nobody cares about what I think about anything, but uh, I've been working with edge compute for the last, um, you know, sort of six to nine months, and it's, you know, like fundamentally transformative the way that we build applications. And in this session, we'll have two incredible talks, uh, first from Samuel and then uh, from Sunil. Um, and I guess without further ado, uh, we can introduce Samuel McLeod. He works at the uh, uh, Workers Experience team at Cloudflare, who are not sponsoring this conference. <laughs> um, they seem to be sponsoring his wardrobe, though, so, uh, yeah. you know. Um, probably a good company to work for if you like free t-shirts. Uh, without further ado, let's give it up for Samuel. Thank you. Yeah, Cloudflare are not sponsoring, but I do work very closely with Pete. Um, and Sunil used to work at Cloudflare. Um, I guess that's what happens when you have a talks about the edge. Um, so I'm going to talk about authentication at the edge. Um, so I'm going to kind of rehash some of the stuff we've talked about already with edge computing, and then go into some specifics of authentication and how you can do some data stuff at the edge. Um, so the first thing is Edge is really designed to solve the problem of the speed of light being slow. Now, the speed of light is slow and your users are global. Um, this is quite a provocative statement. Um, obviously, the speed of light is relatively fast. Um, but when you're talking about global scales, um, you really have a problem. So if you have servers in Helsinki um, and your users are in London, uh, you're looking at about a 30 millisecond ping time. Now, this is just raw network latency not including Wi-Fi connection. If you're here, it's going to be quite slow because the Wi-Fi is quite slow. Um, but raw network latency, 30 milliseconds. 30 milliseconds isn't that bad. But as soon as you go further afield, Los Angeles, um, 180 milliseconds, starting to get a bit slower. Tokyo, it's even worse. And then Sydney and anywhere else in Australia, you're looking at three to 400 milliseconds. Um, ping time from a server in Helsinki, which isn't ideal. Um, so edge computing is really about taking a different approach to this. Instead of having one server in Helsinki, you have hundreds of servers all around the world. And your users will hit the server that's closest to them. Um, so in London, they'll hit a server in London, Tokyo a server in Tokyo, Sydney in Sydney, Los Angeles in Los Angeles, and so on. So story time. Imagine you have an excellent application with users all around the world. You built it at the edge, and you deployed it to Vercel, Netlify, Cloudflare, or some other edge provider. Um, your user testimonials are awesome. Here are a couple I wrote up with ChatGPT. Um, blown away by the speed of your website. It's like Formula One racing for the internet. Quite happy with that one. Um, so here is a very, very, very simple application. It is live. Feel free to play around. It has two pages. The first page, you enter a URL. The second page, you get a QR code. That is all it does. Um, that QR, uh, QR code will link to the URL. Um, but yes, let's just set up the problem. So if we've got this application, one, solution, one problem you might have um, is how can users see what QR codes they previously generated? Obviously, this is all hypothetical, but um, if you go onto the website, you go every week or something, you enter a new URL, you might want to see what URLs you entered last week. Um, so that's a tricky problem. It requires accounts, it requires cross-device sync, it requires data at the edge. And so I've designed this very good web page, which has a list of all the URLs you've gone to. Um, so we're going to implement that today. Now, the main problem here is that we're introducing accounts, and accounts require data storage. So you've gone from a fast edge application to a very, very slow problem. Because your servers are all around the world, you're hitting edge compute servers, but your authentication database, classically, is very central. Um, and you're going to end up with you know, the same slow load times that you had before. Um, you've got users in Los Angeles hitting a centralized auth server in Helsinki. And at that point, you know, why use the edge? What's the point of an edge application if you have these slow external dependencies? You might as well run your app in one place as well, and you get these terrible user testimonials. 
Now, there's a couple classical solutions to this. I'm not going to suggest that the edge is the only option. Um, replication is probably the you know, most popular one. And that's where you have one main primary write database in Helsinki, and then multiple read replicas in you know, Asia, Australia, and America. Um, this does help. One major problem it has is consistency. Um, so this will be an eventually consistent system. So the, the server in America won't be able to get the up-to-date updates from Helsinki. There'll be a kind of a replication lag. Now, this isn't always a problem for some application data. Some application, da application data can deal with this eventual consistency. Um, but for auth specifically, it's really important that you have strong consistency. Think of, think of banning a user. Um, if you ban a user in Helsinki, you want that user to be banned in Sydney. You don't want that user to be able to access the application in Sydney while it's waiting for the kind of replication lag from Helsinki. And for instance, what if the transatlantic cable breaks? At that point, you'll have other problems. But if you didn't, um, this would cause issues. So another classical solution is sharding. And this is where you have multiple main primary write databases. So you've got one in Helsinki that serves EU users, one in America that serves American users, and so on. Um, this is better. It still has issues, though. You still have some regional latency. Um, you know, the server in America has to serve all of America. Uh, the server in Australia has to serve all of Australia. Um, and in the Australian outback, I don't know how good the Wi-Fi is. And you know, it, it solves some problems, but it's also introducing a lot of operational complexity. You know, running tens of servers all, all around the world, that's tricky, it's challenging. Um, and it doesn't really fit in with the kind of serverless ethos of just give the provider your code and they'll deal with the rest. So the question kind of arises, like, what does an edge-friendly solution to this look like? So taking a brief aside, uh, durable objects. Um, this is a primitive that Cloudflare provides. Again, this is not sponsored by Cloudflare. Um, <laughs> to provide compute with an attached, strongly persistent, um, strongly consistent, persistent data store. Um, it's created close to the user. So if a user in Australia creates a durable object, um, that is created in Australia. And that data is stored in Australia. Um, there's kind of some compute attached to it. And the user in Australia will get very fast access. And so on in North America, Helsinki, et cetera. Um, so let's have a look back at sharding. What if we could shard per user? I mean, this would fix the regional latency issues. It really, really, really wouldn't fix the operational complexity issues. I mean, imagine creating a database per user signup. It would be a nightmare. Um, with traditional architectures, it would be infeasible. But with durable objects and with kind of serverless data structures like this, um, it's much easier. And so that's what we're going to do. Next slide. Yeah, OK, excellent. So this is our kind of traditional sharding. We have you know, main primary databases per regional location. Durable objects let us move these right to where the user is. So you have your authentication database right where the user is. So that's the kind of first setup. Next. Excellent, right. Um, so that's all quite abstract. It's all quite kind of preliminary. Um, we're going to make that a bit more concrete, and we're going to do some coding. And cool, right. So imagine this is your application. You have your users hitting your application. Imagine the eyeball is your users and the world is your application. Um, traditionally, how this would work with authentication is you take your application, and your application would call out to an external authentication provider. Um, with edge architectures, it's much better to think about putting the authentication provider before your application. So your users hit the authentication provider, and that hits your application. It's much easier to layer services like that. And so that's what we're going to do. And what are the kind of benefits of this? Well, First off, your application doesn't need to know anything about authentication. It can just kind of get a user object um, from the authentication provider, and it can handle that as, as it wants to. Um, it doesn't need to know how to log in, how to log out, how to revalidate, any concept of sessions. It just needs to know that it has a user, and it can deal with that user, or it doesn't have a user, and it can show an unauthenticated page. So this could look like you know, getting user data from a header, and then if there is a user, you're showing some user-specific data, and if you're not, you're showing some unauthenticated application logic. Those comments are quite low contrast, so you may not be able to read them. Um, but this is just a simple Cloudflare worker. It's exporting a fetch handler. So we're going to look at this um, and try and implement it, and hopefully not break anything. Uh, let me not stop the recording. Um, so here is my very simple application, which lets you enter a URL. And it will give you a QR code. 
also has a performance timer in the bottom left of how long each page takes to load, um, which is quite fun. Um, this is end-to-end -end latency. I'm not saying that Cloudflare workers take 128 milliseconds to, to render a page. This is, you know, from request to response. So I have written a lot of boilerplate, so we don't kind of get bogged down too much in the details. Um, but we'll start off with adding a login button. So on our main page, we have a couple links already. We have a link to the history page, a link to the logout page, and a link to the, is this visible? Excellent. Ignore the errors in that terminal. Um, so I'm going to add a login button. So just a link to login. Now this is in my application code. So my application code doesn't know anything about authentication. So all it's going to do is it's going to have a link to a sp special login page. And that's going to be intercepted by my authentication provider. And my application will just know that it's sending a user to that page. So this will take user data. We don't want to show a login link if the user is logged in. And equally, there might not be a user logged in. So if there isn't a user logged in, then we are going to render login link. So we will link to well-known slash authenticate. This is completely arbitrary. Um, this could be API login, anything like that. Um, but we're going to talk about this later in the authentication section. Um, give it an ID. And give it some text. There we go. So I save that and then insert it into my page. The details of exactly how this is rendered are not super important, um, but it's essentially just HTML. Um, there's no JavaScript framework or anything going on. Um, so now if I reload this page, I will hopefully see a login button. Excellent, thank you. That should be an and. Dangers of live coding, excellent, I see a login page. Now if I click that, um, I'll see not found because my application doesn't know how to handle login. Um, I'll go back. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try and intercept these login requests in the authentication provider. Um, so I've got a separate worker set up here. Um, and this one runs in front of my application. Um, so we have the user, my authentication provider, and then my application. Um, and this one runs in front of my application, and all it does is it exports a fetch handler, um, and then it fetches my application. So it's just delegating through kind of one-to-one -one right now. Um, so I'm going to add some handlers for login. So the first thing that I want is I want to get the URL, because um, I want to figure out if we are on the login page. And then we will intercept the login method. Um, so login, the link that we set, what was the link we set? We set a link to well-known slash authenticate, so I'll check for that. Um, if the method, see how many typos I make. Um, so we'll see if the request method is get and request dot path name, URL dot path name even. Um, we will render a login page. So if I reload this now, and then I press login, I'll see the text. Excellent. Um, return new response. So how Cloudflare Workers works is they take a web standard request and they return a web standard response. They don't return a string. Um, this is kind of different to Lambdas, which can often return a string. Um, so we return a response with the text login page. I reload. Um, then I'll see the text login page. Um, this isn't obviously super useful. Um, so I'm going to instead return an authentication, um, an OAuth redirect to Discord OAuth just to simplify um, the mechanics of this. Um, da -da. With some code I've written earlier. Um, so this should work. Fingers crossed. So now what's happened is I've gone to my authentication provider that's redirected me to Discord. At no point has it, this hit my application. And so if I authorize this, I'll go back and I'll get an found because my application has got the callback from Discord OAuth and it doesn't know how to handle authentication. So I also need to insert um, you know, some handling logic for Discord's OAuth callback. 
Um, and again, Discord is just an implementation detail here. This could be any sort of actual auth provider, password hashing, et cetera. So um, if Discord's auth uh, callback is another get request, and it's to the URL, Well known callback discard. Um, so, the first thing I want to do here is I want to get some user data. So, Discord is going to give me a user token, um, and I can get some user data from that to get you know, the Discord user's avatar and stuff like that. Um, so, I will do const Discord user. So if I return that, we should be able to see this user data. So this is now handling, you know, catching that uh, callback from Discord and giving me the user data. So the next thing I need to do is I need to put this into a durable object. I need to get this kind of stored on the edge and then forward it onto my application. Um, so we're going to set up a durable object, and this durable object is going to be set up close to wherever the user is. Um, we're going to stick their Discord information into it and keep that per persistent. And then when the user kind of goes to this application, um, this authentication middleware is going to go fetch from the durable object, get the user data, and then go to my actual application. And all of that will be very fast. Um, so let's stick it in a durable object. So I have a very simple durable object to find here. Um, so to quickly go over the API of durable objects and what they are, um, I said they were compute attached to some data. So it's a class you define in JavaScript, and then you bind it to your worker. Um, and essentially, you talk to it through a fetch handler. You talk to it um, as if you were sending it a fetch request. And then in the durable object, you can kind of catch that, and you can do things with that data and send back a response uh, to your worker. Um, the interface is HTTP, but this is not necessarily actually going over the public internet. Um, a lot of the Cloudflare internal inter interfaces are HTTP, even though the actual implementation is not over the internet. Um, so in my, in my code, I can construct a durable object and and pass it in the Discord user data. So this is going to construct a durable object and then give it the Discord user data. So that durable object will now be instantiated close to where the user is, have that user data stored in it, and then kind of pass it back to the client. Um, so last thing, I want to store this in a cookie because I want to be able to re-authenticate later. I don't want to have to go through this OAuth dance every single time I hit my application. Um, so for that, I'm going to return a new response with a cookie, cookie header. And again, this is all from within the authentication. It's not in the application. Um, I don't need an actual body. It's going to be a redirect. Um, so status 302, I think, is a redirect. Um, headers, I'll need a location header. Um, which should be to my original URL. Actually, it should be to the base path, which I should probably modify the URL to be. So I'll take my original URL and I'll change the path name to nothing. And then I want a set cookie header. So I'm going to call this auth token completely arbitrarily. Um, pass it in some data. Excellent. Pass it in the user signature. Um, set a path. And make sure it's secure. And finally, it should be only. Cool. Um, that should be all that's required. Fingers crossed this will work. So now if I go to this, I will get an error message from Discord because I've already got this token. Uh, let's go back through the auth dance. Excellent. So now I've been redirected to the root. And if I check my cookies, um, I can see that I hopefully have a cookie. 
Excellent, I have that cookie set. Now my application doesn't know how to deal with this yet because my authentication middleware is not reading that cookie and getting the data back from the durable object. So what I need to do now is in the authentication middleware, I need to read from the durable object and then send it on to the application. So I will delete this code and do that here. So I want to get the cookie. Um, request dot headers dot get cookie. So this is going to be the authentication cookie. Um, and I'm going to check if there is an authentication cookie. I'm going to send user data. Else I'm just going to forward through to the application as normal as I was previously. Um, so we're going to get the existing user. So this is going to fetch from my durable object the existing user um, associated with this cookie. Um, and then if I return this immediately, actually, just to see what this looks like. Uh, we can reload this application, and we should get the existing user. So this is showing the existing user being loaded from a durable object um, in my authentication middleware and kind of being passed back to your application, rather than going through to your main application. Um, that's not exactly what we want. We want to pass it through to the main application. Um, so we're going to construct some headers. Um, and in the application, we called it X user. So we'll continue with that naming and stringify this user data. Construct a new request. with these headers, and then finally, we can pass on that request to the application. So now we're checking if we've got an auth cookie, and if we do, we're inflating that request with this user data, sending it onto the application, otherwise just sending the request straight to the application. Um, so if I reload this page, hopefully this should all work, so now I'm logged in. Um, this application still doesn't know anything about auth, it's just getting this user data from the, from the middleware, but it's now able to kind of deal with history, it's able to show my history, um, it's able to, yeah, do all that stuff. And then log out, which I have not implemented. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Cool. There we are. Um, yeah, that's, kind of, that's it. That's me.